Hi everyone, thanks for watching. You can support our work on our website ageoftruth.tv and please like our videos, subscribe to our channels on YouTube, BitChute and Brideon and remember to hit the bell for notifications and follow us on Instagram and Facebook. To be sure not to miss any of our shows, you can sign up for our newsletter on our website ageoftruth.tv Hi, how are you? Oh, God, I love your background. I love, I love Denmark. Thank you. Um, yeah, I've been there a few times, and yeah, Denmark, Scandinavia all together, but Denmark was my favorite. Spent some time in Aarhus and Copenhagen too. Yeah. Wow, was... that's wonderful. You've been to our country. That's 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 great. Not everybody that's on the show have. Hello and welcome to this edition of Age of Truth TV. I'm Lucas Alexander in Western Zealand, Denmark. It's the 3rd of April 2024 and our special guest today is a fascinating lady who lives in Sedona, Arizona. She is a best-selling author, a metaphysical specialist and teacher, and a spiritual healer. She has published a new book called Leaving the Trap about the reincarnation recycling death soul trap. We've discussed it many times on this channel, but we will go really in depth today and discuss this fascinating and controversial topic with Isabella A. Green. from Western Zealand, Denmark, and hello to all of our viewers on Age of Truth TV. Please like our videos and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell for notifications. We have an extraordinary and fascinating and mind-expanding show for you today with a very special lady, an author and metaphysical specialist and teacher and spiritual healer, She's just written a new book called Leaving the Trap, and I'm thrilled to welcome her on the show with us from Sedona, Arizona, Isabella A. Green. Thank you so much, Isabella, for being with us today. Thank you, Lucas, for having me on the show. It's a pleasure. Great. Well, before we go into, or I go into a lot of the questions that I prepared, Please tell the audience a little bit about your own journey and what led you to this. What is what is your history and a little bit about your past? Well, I was always a very curious, daring soul, and I wanted to explore the world um, to the fullest. And I explored the physical experience first to the point that everything just kind of became really boring. Oh, I've been there, done that, been there, done that. And I worked in corporate, in a corporate environment. I toured uh, bands around Europe. I uh, um, lived the life of a rock star by night. I traveled the world um, extensively. And I was always seeking new experiences. And when it got to the point that there were no more new experiences that I was interested in, I um, encountered the work of Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it was a perfect alignment because I was so bored in life. I didn't really know what to do with myself. I was laid off from my job and I was just sitting there going, now what, right? And then I took uh, the first workshop of Dr. Joe Dispenza very early in his work, 2010, and learned the breath work and learned his meditative technique. 
and started doing it and things just started changing all by itself so um, day after day I noticed that I was less and less excited about being in New York City uh, which I thought I would never leave and then uh, more and more interested in consciousness and in how human psyche works uh, and in uh, the otherworldly stuff. And I started remembering things from my childhood where I, I had abilities but shut them down later. And so one thing led to the next. And then I found myself in Sedona, Arizona, where I really had exposure to... Uh, bright minds of spiritual community and deepened my journey. The first year, uh, about a year and a half in Sedona, all I did was just meditate and my abilities opened up and I started a spiritual healing practice and it continues to evolve. And as I continued doing these practices, um, now in the middle of the night, I started having really advanced spiritual experiences something that is considered advanced for me it was just like whoa this was incredible but now i'm learning that it was really advanced a level of spiritual experiences the experience of samadhi experience of um the field of omnipresence of the higher consciousness or the super consciousness if you wish and that led to many different um, no, to access to all kinds of awareness and knowledge. And there was a whole list of other experiences that I had that led to me getting curious um, about what happens after death. But that was happening in parallel, kind of. And then I put it all together um, just in short glimpses of my experiences and published the book last year, that Leaving the Trap, how to exit reincarnation cycle because I connected all these things in the book and presented the reader with a suggestion to question what's going on because things are not what we see or what we're taught on the surface. Definitely not. And it's such an interesting and fascinating topic. We've been talking about it for many years on Age of Truth TV. We also did a very, um, very well, quite... Um, celebrated video called what happens to us when we die and people can watch that from years ago with lots of wonderful speakers and this is a topic that i really think is very profound and uh very very important for everybody to know about uh, and before we go into that I just want to ask you about your journey there because i also traveled america and, and lived there for a while and and like i am you're, you're also from europe but what took you there was that was that uh, because you were involved with all of these musicians? Curiosity, I would say curiosity, because it wasn't. I had an opportunity to visit um, for two weeks, and I went to visit. It was a part of the of the um, international exchange program with artists and musicians, and I went um, as a part of that to visit uh, the United States for two weeks with $80 in my pocket and never left. So I've been here in the United States ever since. And I first landed in Pennsylvania and then I moved to, to New York City because Pennsylvania just didn't have to offer uh, what I what I wanted to have that whole music scene and and the um, a bit type of a beat kind of lifestyle. And then um, I moved to Arizona, which was, if you told me that 20 years ago that I was going to be in Arizona, living in the middle of nowhere, just um, living uh, the pure lifestyle of a spiritual teacher, mm, I would have never, I would have laughed in your face. That was so far um, away and not a part of my reality back then. So right. then curiosity, but curiosity is what took me, what's taken me everywhere, really, what's opening all um, different levels of awareness, because I'm constantly shaking the bars of my cage. <laughs> right. And we should do that, shouldn't we? And it's wonderful when we go to that place where we search for things that actually really matter, right? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Isabella, my first question for you could be or is, on behalf of a lot of people watching, 
do we fly directly into the tunnel of light at the point of death and sit back or stand there enjoying a roller coaster ride watching our life review with everything we did in our lives good and bad and accept the judgment from the enlightened beings that we encounter at the point of death when we are inside of this tunnel of light when we are on this heavenly projection this frequency field and our souls put into a new body with a white memory on earth again reliving or living another reincarnation cycle karma wheel cycle not being able to remember who we really are and then go back and do the whole thing all over again do we do that because we need to develop because we need to evolve as soul beings or do we simply say no i will not go through this again i've had enough i'm leaving goodbye what are your thoughts isabella well here's the thing that we are not presented or before this day and time we were not presented with an alternative all of the teachings that uh, speak about reincarnation and there are a lot of religious teachings that do not acknowledge reincarnation but those who that do insist that that's a happy occurrence that that is for the benefit of the soul that it's for the evolution of the soul and i disagree with that strongly and so people because they have been conditioned throughout their lives to believe that uh, we are imperfect just because we exist we have to get better through the reincarnation cycle and so as soon as they uh, up uh, there in the afterlife dimension which i posit is the upper astral and the lower astral is the denser the upper astral is like heaven the lower astral is what we call hell that is uh, the space where they encounter the beings uh, that are shape-shifting beings and they present themselves as the ones that we will believe the most and they give us the life review showing that we were not good enough and never good enough no matter how long you are on earth you're never good enough for these beings and then there you are you're going to um continue getting better through the reincarnation cycle and the way you presented it is very powerful because you put it all together in just one short sentence <laughs> um yeah but we're not presented with a different choice even there when we are facing the handlers there is never another suggestion there is never like oh would you like to go or would you not like to go they will run you in circles until uh, you agree to go and and people who had near-death experiences people who were aware that this system is in place when they had near-death experiences they argued with the archons um, saying i'm not going but they went through cycles and cycles of negotiation and uh, the archons because they can read you like a book they will always find that weak spot where you hesitate as soon as you hesitate you're in for the next cycle and so the system is very strong and very tricky and um, i think you need to go through adequate preparations within this lifetime so that you can either bypass that system ideally altogether or be prepared to be strong and handle uh, the negotiations um, but I again I'm not 100% sure that you uh, that they're not going to find something within your system within your psyche that is not going to make you agree to go for another cycle because that is a farm that is the system that feeds that whole dimension and uh, there are many questions about who are these beings and no one has ever seen these beings as the real presentation of themselves they always present themselves as 
either deities or it might be jesus it might be krishna it might be your grandmother it might be but it is always someone who you love dearly and your heart opens really wide and you are ready to do anything that they tell you whatever belief system you you devote yourself to whether you're a christian or a jew or a yes. muslim or hindu a buddha a buddhist or something like that you will see that deity or you will see that thing you worship or if you miss your grandmother as you say yeah. or father mother whatever and also exactly. they have the ability to project a feeling of love yeah. right yeah a, yeah a great sensation and you want to go to that sensation right it's right. like when we have addictions or other things yeah. that we love to do physically or um in terms of food or drink We want to do that. We want to have more of that. And if you feel that sensation, you want to go towards it. And to say no to that, that takes a lot, right? But you said something before we before you continue. You talked about the astral, the lower astral plane and the higher astral plane. Yeah. But please explain that place, that what people, Christians or Muslims call heaven, Um, right. which is where this is, right? The tunnel of light yeah. with the life review and all of these deities and family members, yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah. Is that in the is that the fourth dimension? We operate on the uh, on the third dimension, and right. then there's the fifth dimension. Where is this place? I would suggest. So I have extensively astral projected through my young years 17 to 24 was astral projecting so i have explored the astral realm through and through it was fun i had the shaman who was overseeing me he even taught me the astral combat for the time when you go into the lower astral and so the lower astral is very close to the earth dimension in its consciousness and if we take the idea that um, dimensions are just levels of consciousness then i would say that the lower astral is like literally right outside 3.1 <laughs> d to uh, i don't know somewhere below four maybe 4.4 three or something like that then we have the upper astral that stretches past 4.5 uh, to about the fifth dimension and i be honest with you i've been questioning the fifth dimension very much because now everyone is talking about going into the fifth dimension but i have not seen the fifth dimension as the higher realm i have seen it as still a dimension that is very much linked to our desires and the earthly satisfaction and that is something that people are grasping for right like you mentioned i want the money i want the riches i want to feel good i want all that is as if as if that's all provided in the fifth dimension and so that dimension is very much very much sounds like a part of the matrix system so i posit that the matrix system i don't know below 3d because i have not uh, really gone there but um, from third dimension to fifth dimension we have uh, the matrix system and that is where the reincarnation cycle is set up all together so let me just uh let me just sum that up where you're saying the the, the matrix you say is yeah. within the fifth dimension i mean that it begins with the fifth dimension that's the outer layer yeah. of the matrix and then they it goes further down but not up I mean, not to not the sixth up. or seventh dimension. If you if you have to if you go there, then you have then you have gone through the matrix or bypassed the ma matrix or broken through yeah. that barrier in some kind of way. Right. There is there is um, like a like a barrier around uh, the reincarnation cycle bubble. It's like a bubble of the astral plane um, that that is where the reincarnation cycle is set up and i think that's that's the same as where the matrix is set up and that is the dimensions of consciousness so the levels of consciousness they have where where mm, the concept of taking off of others exists and um i know mm, Howie Makovsky says that um, the, the matrix encompasses universes and universes, that it's everywhere.
software, right? But I uh, have seen that it encompasses just these layers or just these dimensions of the universes and of other planets and of Earth plane as well. And so the system is not just around Earth plane, but it includes other realities, but all within the dimensions between 3.1D, let's just say, to 4.9, and the fifth is a gray area for me. Definitely, once you have learned to bypass that and go straight into the higher levels of consciousness, a higher state of being, the higher realms, that start past the fifth dimension, possibly from the sixth and up. That's what my experience has been. So all of the our multiverse, let's say, that consists of, let's say, an infinite number of parallel universes, yeah. and we are on in one. Right. All of that is within the matrix, within these five dimensions, or what? Does the multiverse go beyond this matrix? Yeah, I, I would say that the multiverses go beyond the matrix, but the levels or the dimensions of, of every multiverse that is between 3.1 or third density to fifth density, that's a part of the matrix. This is what I posit. This is what I have experienced and seen through my astral projection and through my astral projection. And as, when I say astral projection, that is just going through these layers right to the grid that holds the astral plane together. And you can see that there is a, like a bubble, let's just say, right? The, the overhead and within each, oh, within that overhead, each planet has the segments of the reincarnation cycle between dimensions of three and five. And then, because we are in in the multiverse and a multiple, um, multi-dimensional reality, once we go past these dimensions, the same the same planets, the same parts of, of the multiverses are not a part of the matrix past the sixth dimension. This is what I am, um, I have observed in, in my non-physical exploration. Mm -hmm. So if we were to be able to, let's say, loop or travel to another dimension, another yeah. frequency of, of Earth, another reality of Earth, in a parallel dimension of this earthly plane where maybe the there's another dimension. maybe there's another isabella or another lucas or other people as well doing other things because they made other choices are that is that parallel dimension also controlled by these these demonic archon jinn entities if the parallel timelines that you mentioned, the parallel dimensions, are within the level of consciousness where using others is a common theme, um, so again, between 3 and 5D, then yes. So because everything we... between 3 and 5D is controlled by these, let's just say, dark forces, these interdimensional forces that we don't like, to say the least. I believe so. I believe so. And I have seen non-terrestrial representation of the same forces um, when the people were passing out of, at the moment of passing, there were two tunnels presented. One would be the tunnel of white light, our common standard angelic looking beings waiting. And then another one would be um, of the blue light. And I saw two different other types of entities waiting for the soul. They didn't harass the soul. They let the soul choose uh, which tunnel to go to. And, and the beings that were there, the two types that I saw was one um, looking like the Mantean beings and the other were looking like the typical grays, but they were of blue color. They were like smaller uh, blue non-terrestrial beings. And it was obvious that they had some sort of accounting for the soul system or whatever, because they they had 
it looks like it like they had devices or something where they were recording and that soul is where it's going or if it was they were waiting to record that coming back into their reality but couldn't they all just be archons in disguise yes. shapes yes no matter if it's the blue light or the white light or whatever light just as long as they give you a feeling of choice like on this earth right Oh, you can choose this system of blue or red or vote for Republican or Democrat. It's all just the same deception, right? I think that because um, I think that they are the representation of a different race um, or the projection that the archons are presenting as a different race but i i uh quite agree with you that it's possible that all of them across the board if they're running the reincarnation cycle system they are a part of the same consciousness and as the umbrella we call that consciousness the archons for sure do you think that the mantid beings praying mantis type aliens or reptilians or other arcturians maybe or nordics whatever do you think that they could also be archons in disguise or do they have a separate soul entity being or a separate soul inside of them or do they have the dimensional layer that is a part of the reincarnation cycle and that's where they present themselves and play the role of the archons and in your interview with linda with linda martin howie i heard that she said that there were three three non-terrestrial competing races that are running and have been harvesting and farming the human race and, and are running the whole system. And so considering that I, before I heard that, I saw the angelic looking white beings, they look very much like the Nordic uh, Pleiadian beings, if you think about it, always blonde, always blue eyes, always that love, right? And then uh, the Mantean beings and the the blue colored gray like beings. That's three right there. And so when I heard that in the interview, that made me kind of startled. I was thinking, wow. So do the angelic looking beings do they belong to the level of dim or dimensional level of the pleiadian representation on this planet that is also a part of the reincarnation cycle and that are the archons so that made me wonder you know if if uh, that's the three races that she was talking about because i have seen all three um at least these these are the beings that i have seen so it's a question, you know, we don't really um, have, I personally don't really have the answer as to what exactly is the Archon, but could it be the projection of this race and this race and that race? Or could it be a representation of this and that and that race on that level of consciousness where they are acting as Archons? or where they are in the role of the archons. It's all extremely, uh, well, confusing, and it's a, a very polluted uh, field to get into because yeah. there are a lot of different thoughts on this and ideas, and many different people ha who's had experiences like you, um, astral projecting or clairvoyance or w whatever way that they experience things, they all have very different experiences uh, and some have the same but i mean who are we going who are going to believe i mean your experience is the absolute truth for you but if those archon beings are so um clever in in yeah. disguising who they are and giving people different experiences leading them in a certain direction then what can we really depend on what we do know uh, at least in this field of truth research that you and i are both in we um, have come to understand that these Archon beings are also um, controlling this earthly realm through exactly. our political system and the so-called yep. Illuminati cult um, yes. uh, sphere. Yes, and the all of the teachings 
and all of the scriptures that make human beings feel inferior from the moment we're born inferior to these uh, apparitions or to the the ones that can just pop in out of thin air in your face and tell you what to do all of that is a part of the same system and it's operating not only in the um, astral dimension around earth not only in the reincarnation cycle around earth but also on earth as you just said i agree 100 percent so i my recommendation is this who cares what they are teach yourself to bypass as the whole structure and you're free and so in that way you at least give yourself a choice at the end of your lifetime so there are a lot of people that are very attached to the earth plane and very attached to these ideas that they need to go through cycles of reincarnation and so by all means go ahead and continue go get vacuumed into the white light and go through the whole standard procedure but if you don't want to do that there are practices that are available on this planet and a lot of these practices were taught since the beginning of time by advanced yogis in in india um, and um, advanced practices that make you overcome the physicality that really plugs you into the matrix overcome the brain that is like a constant biological computer that's collecting the information from the matrix and producing not only your own thoughts but also the thoughts or the uh, concepts that are projected onto the human race so that's constantly running there and that is something that wires you right into the matrix right into this whole system but if you take effort make an effort to teach yourself to control that biological vehicle within which you sit in and to direct your non-physical form in a way that you prefer and to go bypass the the dimensions of the matrix and liberate yourself then you're free this is what this is the main idea of my book and this is the main idea of my teachings and recommendations for, for people but how do people do that and come to understand how to use that tool, whatever tool that is, certainly a spiritual uh, wisdom? Is this about um, getting rid of your addictions or your dif the different trappings and luxury or whatever? Or can you still enjoy that? I mean, then you're still um, very attached to the physical realm, obviously. And but but the thing is, what happens when we die at the point of death? Does it take for us, the soul, our consciousness to just simply say no when we see these archon beings project, uh, maybe projecting as a um, mother, father, a god or whatever like figure? What does it I take? do not believe that just saying no is enough. Because they literally would run you in circles. If you went into the light, and, and I, I posit that that's a false light, that's a false presentation, as we have a false presentation of everything, even on this planet, right? You know that better than I do. And so they created the false presentation of every true spiritual occurrence, including the true light. And so the tunnel of white light, that's something we're being taught about, but it's strong like a vacuum. If, if you allowed yourself to be pulled into that and it spits you right into the, the astral plane where the, you are facing the handlers, chances are slim that you're able to just say no unless you've done a really really powerful preparation on earth and have achieved significant results and i can explain what i mean by that in a minute but the easier way is to teach yourself to go out of body at will disconnect silence the mind disconnect from the physical and direct yourself into the um 
field of omnipresence or the state of samadhi, the highest level of the state of samadhi, or um, the fabric of reality, then you completely dissolve and you do no, you no longer are wired in all of these little human desires and human, um, the whole humanness that keeps us hooked within the reincarnation cycle. And when you learn to do this and you start having these experiences, addictions and attachments, all of that loosens up by itself. It kind of falls off by itself. Not that you um, want to become a monk, although it does kind of feel like you, you're drawn to that state of being. I know that from my own experience, but all of the attachments, the strength of the matrix that is wired into our state of being here, all of that loosens up significantly. So you no longer, uh, it's not that you have to give it up first. It just uh, kind of falls off or becomes much, you become much less attached to these things naturally when you're doing these practices. So there's a certain practice you can do and you feel, and you can talk about what that is, but you feel that is very important. And you also talk about preparation yeah. for death and to pre preparing ourselves to say no. But do yeah. we really need to prepare ourselves in this lifetime right now in order to say no uh, to another incarnation on earth when our souls leave the body? And do we need to say, prepare ourselves to say no, not to be controlled by these archons to withstand that temptation it might be when we are there? And you're ta talking also about being actually forced, sucked into this um, white light dimension, yeah. this tunnel thing, which actually then that's not really a choice, right? Then you are being forced to do something against your will but can, can't we just say no? Do we need to prepare? And now we know, and I could go there. You could go and just say, no, I'm not having it. Goodbye. I'm leaving. If you're facing the archons, um, unless you've done the prep, prep, prep work while you are still alive, they have an arsenal of, of ways, uh, arsenal of tools of convincing you. And the number one, the strongest uh, chip on the shoulder uh, for the human being is uh, inadequacy, feeling unworthy, feeling not good enough. And look how it is, how it is supported from all directions in every possible way. Every little, every little marketing campaign is based on you not being good enough and you'll be better if you buy this car or you'll be better if you have this house or a corner office, right? Somewhere. So that is instilled in grade and in the human psyche generation after generation. And the minute the archons kind of hint onto you that, well, you could have done better. If the guilt is there and you have not released, you're not good enough right here, then you you're going to hesitate and the hesitation is taken as a yes or you're going to bow and say yes you're right i was a terrible person just because i was born and that's it so doing the inner work to let go of feeling guilty for your own existence feeling inferior to the spirits feeling um unworthy and not good enough and all of the generational trauma that has been passed on from the very inception of the human race, it's almost like the trauma was created same time as the humans were created and we just kept passing it on and on and on. Unless you have let go of that significantly, they are going to find a way to manipulate you in feeling guilty or feeling inadequate and agreeing to go in and being learning to learning to be better because that's the whole thing that they present they you you learn to be better you will be better or you will pay off your karma which doesn't work at all because karma is set up like a credit card debt you're wiped 
you show up even if you recall a little bit of something it's always a minimal payment per each life <laughs> and so for each lifetime even if you did um fulfill something related to your so-called karma the debt keeps growing because we don't have access to the whole to the entire bill so to speak all right but the whole idea is false about karma so uh doing the inner work to release these inadequacies within you first of all but truly not just becoming full of yourself i'm so i'm so not i'm so confident and i'm so good enough right but truly truly get in there so that the the archons cannot find the weak spot in you and then also releasing all of the contracts and agreements that you made not only with your own soul in other realities with the archons the previous incarnations but also with the loved ones i will love you forever I will come back for you in the next lifetime. We say these things so naturally. I've loved you for incarnations and I would love you for the rest of my incarnations. And that would be presented to you as a promise or as a contract that you have made with a different soul. And now, oh, you're feeling guilty for breaking that soul's heart. Uh, if you don't show up, they're going to be searching for you their whole life. And how do you feel about that? But don't you think that call. these other consciousness uh, frequencies, let's say our loved ones that we promised that to, I'll see yeah. you again. Don't you think we're on another level in another realm can see things in a much bigger picture when we're up there or there, wherever there is what we talked about that dimension? Or are we still equally as trapped in our minds? I mean, at least the consciousness when we are out of body at the point of death. I am talking about the tactics that the Archons utilize uh, to send you back into the next cycle of reincarnation and reminding you of the vows and the promises that you made to the loved ones is one of those tactics. And even if you do, I don't know, even if you do experience the, the bigger a part of yourself that is more expanded uh, than what we know on earth plane we're still not we still don't have the in the access to the entirety of our soul composition and so we're still subject to manipulation so these archon beings some call them demons and some even say that uh, the archons are the same as the jinn when the muslims and in the quran talk about the jinn and we also he hear a genie in the bottle again you know like a yeah. kind of a spirit and spirits what we drink and all of that there's a lot of words connected to that whole uh, topic here and realm in terms of understanding how everything is connected words and numbers but th those beings they feed on human anxiety angst fear hatred and and of course our addictions here on yeah. this earth so a lot of people or so a lot of archons i mean these entities could take i mean could enter our bodies and feed on specific um parts of your bodies that maybe will become a bit unstable or in the mind feed uh, they will come in and feed on your um addictions and and of course fear of not being worthy or loved or how do you get the next paycheck i suppose right so you're already here maybe enslaved by these archons in your body how can that how can we get rid of that before we have to go through to the tunnel of light and stand in front of that it's the same it's the same process um as what i was just describing the the idea is of taking care of generational conditioning and generational traumas that you have been conditioned into doing the inner healing work addictions are the result of the lack of connection and the need to escape into where you don't feel the 
constant pain usually. So address the cause, address the root cause of that. And as you clear that and you heal your traumas in this lifetime, not only you become, you, you experience a better ex life right here on earth, but you also are less um, susceptible to be manipulated by the ones who run the reincarnation cycle. And the spirits that everything, everything has a spirit form. Every plant has a spirit form. Every spirit that we drink has a spirit form as well. All drugs have a spirit form of their own. And so are they the same type of spirits as archons? I don't know. I do um, entity clearing for people as a part of my spiritual healing work. And there is a wide variety of different types of spirits that like to hitchhike within the human form. Very often we invite them in with the substances that we put into our bodies. And um, they don't seem, they seem to be a part of the lower dimensional construct of the earth plane. And uh, the perhaps the lower astral is a part of that because if you project into low astral you bring them back with you they can jump into your body with you i do not see that they are the same as archons that are running the reincarnation cycle the ones that are running the reincarnation cycle seem to be superior to these so in my in my observation and my understanding of things there is somewhat of a hierarchy of spirits but the ones that are uh, tormenting the human race and attaching to the human race and feeding off of the human race like you mentioned through spirits through addictions as they are all serving the dark dimension or they all serve in the realms that are utilizing the earth uh, the earthlings or the human beings for their sustenance and so from the bigger perspective it's all the same system we are then enslaved on this planet in a way by these archon forces but a lot of people especially religious people but also uh us who, who are into the um to very spiritual uh matters and topics we believe in a higher power higher mm -hmm. consciousness what religious people call god god mind where is god in all of this or that uh, super power that supposedly created everything, the creator force source. I mean, right. why would this source allow these archons to manipulate this whole matrix and enslave this planet and the human race? I hear this question more often than, than I can tell you. And here's the thing. Source is a fabric that out of which everything is made everything exists within existence source is not a, a personality uh the bearded man who sits on the cloud saying do this or don't do that right source is the neutral field of energy like if you want to take the quantum field of information on the omnipresence the infinity and this is something that you experience as a result of the spiritual practices that I've been doing for 10 years and, and that I recommend to, for people to get involved in that takes you straight into that dimension, into that state of being. You experience it. It's completely neutral. There is nothing there saying do this or don't do that. And because everything exists within existence, the lower realms exist, the uh, archons exist, the human beings exist, the planets of the or developing worlds exist, and also the higher um, dimensional worlds exist. And it there's nothing, it's not the force that is going to show up like a police force saying, you cannot do this, you cannot enslave this, this and that. But even if we take the archons, and we distill them all the way back to what they originally are as a fabric of reality, it's going to be the same fabric of reality that you and I are made of. 
that the planets are made of and these beings are made of the same exact thing. They're just operating within the level of consciousness where the type of action that they are involved in is a norm. But I mean... It could we could have been lucky and these guardians of this matrix were really nice and caring and loving towards the human race. But alas, we uh we got the archons. That's <laughs> it's not very nice, is it, Isabella? But look at how many people on this planet believe that we Uh oh. Oh, are, 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 can you see me? Yeah, I can see you, and you froze right on the question. Well, about... the whole thing went out black on my on my screen here. Yeah. My God, I hope are we still recording? My. It said it said recording wow. stopped, and then it said recording in progress. Yeah, it did say that. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. And what I write on the question about the guardians that we got right. So I was answering your question. Let's repeat your question. You said, why did we get the archons as the guardians and not the nice ones, right? And yeah. my answer was, how many people on this planet believe that the ones that we have are the nice ones? How many people believe that the spirits they're talking to have their best interest in mind? I always bring, I always bring uh, Jean of Arc as an example, she was talking to God. She believed that the guidance that, that God gave her was the higher, um, I don't know, the higher purpose, the higher, the highest mission, right? And so she facilitated uh, the wars and she brought the family that is still running the, you know, the, the, the covert operation or whatever into power. And after that, she was discarded like an old shoe and no one showed up for her to save her from a terrible fate that she faced, right? So was that a benevolent God talking to her or was there an agenda to put that specific family in power right there same same when the angelic operation shows up and give you some sort of direction do this do this do that and people follow blindly believing that that uh, these guides are uh the like the ones who have their highest good in mind how many people believe that the government is has their highest good in mind yeah isn't that extraordinary Ex especially after what's been happening just in the last four years but i mean there are many of us who've seen this for for decades now i mean it's right. unbelievable it's right in your face and history and people, people don't learn from history do they and people still say no the government will not do this to us because they have our highest good in mind. So it's a conditioning and, and well, that's what's running on this planet through all these layers, right? From the physical to the non-physical experiences. And I always say you have to practice discernment with spiritual operations that pop in your face or in your head and start talking and telling you to do this, this and that pause right there and see if there is if uh if that is going to lead to uh highest good of what is there an agenda uh behind that or are you just being used um to push forward some other agenda something else right there so that's the, my answer to uh the type of guides and and presence that we have around on this planet yeah earth is a questionable is a questionable existence but there is a way out there is a way out but and... do you think isabella I, i've spoken to a lot of um 
teachers and people that are into this field. And some suggest that we are here to experience. And the only way to feel sensation through our five senses and to feel something really profoundly is to go into uh, the soul, to go into a body, a new body, and to experience everything, love, um, hate, uh, frustration, the sensation of happiness. And we can only do that. And this duality, experience that uh, when we are here and when we manifest in a physical form so that it is not altogether a bad thing. And it's a good thing. And that whole thing of going back and forth could be the soul saying, I want to experience that again in a new way, in a new form. What are your thoughts on that? If that makes them feel better about everything that's happening with them on earth, by all means, there are many, there are many ideas that are there just to make you endure and just to make you feel better. Oh, you're suffering for the bigger cause because the source is collecting information about its own experience through your human reality, right? Or through your human life. But we're so redundant, Lucas. I work with people, I interview people um, every week for my private sessions it's the same story over and over how many variations of of human relationships are there how many variations of the same of the soul experience with a different soul are there it's your mother it's your father it's your sister it's your aunt it's your lover but there there are only there's a very limited amount of experience that the human life presents and definitely centuries and centuries of repetition of the same is not required for source to collect anything and if you have ever if you have ever experienced what is called the state of samadhi that state of infinity omnipresence everything is there already some Every... people experience something similar to what you're you're talking about here through these mind expanding um Substances. drugs or yeah. uh, what do you call therapy whatever ayahuasca or uh, well LSD which is of course um a chemical substance right but i mean can you go there and have that experience without taking any mind expanding uh, drugs yeah, and it's very different, by the way, because when you are having mind expanding substances, and trust me, I've tried it all, except ayahuasca, I, I stopped before ayahuasca because I've seen enough, but that puts you in the astral plane. You experience the, you have all these experiences, but there are beings there, and there are environments there, and there are colors there, and there are experiences there. It's all happening within the astral plane. What's produced on earth, including the plant medicine or in the plant substances that are made on earth, only allows you access to the dimensions that are linked to earth directly but when you so you really are within that layer between 3.1 to to five fifth dimension and this is where you have in your experiences but if you have learned to go out of body and i call this quantum travel through natural means and if you have not messed up your meridians before that and by the way ayahuasca for example or different type of substances they just tear apart your whole meridian system and so the energy has a hard time moving naturally but if you are intact or if you've healed that and you um learned how to utilize your kundalini energy your life force to travel out of body you can take yourself into the highest realm of all if you wish or into the fabric of everything straight into that fabric of source where everything 
is present but it's dark it's 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 like the sea of of velvety blackness if you wish i heard people describe it like that it's the most content state you'd ever experience it's the most perfect state you'd ever experience and you are not there but you're there but you're everywhere at the same time so it's very challenging to put it in words you have to experience it is that what people call the void that's exactly the what people call the void that's exactly what i'm talking and how about. would you explain yes. the void is that like a black um a dimension without any uh life or life forms but at the same time everything is present it's the it's like going right back to as the fabric of everything so nothing is it nothing nothingness then? yes nothingness but it's everything and nothing at the same time so um Dao de ching um is the book that continuously tries to explain the Tao, but it says if you explain it, then you miss the point. But I'm going to give it a, a, a my own try right here. So if you take a drop of water, a drop of water, that's you, for example, or myself. I am a drop of water. But then that drop of water, when it's a part of the ocean, that consists of all the drops of water of if every if everything in the world in the universe is a drop of water is the ocean that consists all water that's the void that's the omnipresence or that's the super consciousness that's the state of samadhi and i have experienced it i experience it in a few times a week because i have been doing these practices uh, the breath work and the meditative technique in the middle of the night, uh, 10 years now. And that is something that helped me pave the way into that state of being. And it, it continues to get deeper and deeper if that's possible. I don't know even how to explain that. But that's the ticket out of any structure breath work you say is it like yeah. Wim Hof that technique with with uh, that that kind of breathing or how do you do that how do you go to how, what does it take for people to go to that space to that place the void and is it the same as astral projection or uh, quantum travel quantum travel and astral projection is yeah. that the same as going to the void so the astral projection is where you have spirits you, ha you it is very different from quantum travel astral projection is when you lay down you relax and you very gently push your astral body out of of your physical form and then you are able to move around um dimensions within the astral plane this is when people say oh i was standing next to my body in my room looking at my body laying there that's astral projecting when you go and there are spirits around you and there are um, environments around you that's astral dimension and that's astral projection quantum travel is lighting up your kundalini energy igniting your kundalini energy and making it shoot out of the top of your head and it pulls all of you out all of it and it shoots like a rocket straight into that field into the state of omnipresence then you're no longer within your body and you are not walking around earth plane or any plane where there are spirits because it's completely void of any um, form or any shape of anything but you don't feel alone you don't feel um, lost or eerie for the most part at the beginning some people were saying that they were feeling really eerie because there was nothing around but that means that there is still mental con like mental uh processing going on and that means that they're not fully departed they're still connected to their um brain computer that's processing oh there is nothing around 
Yeah, and but can different... it be dangerous to do that, Isabella? Can it be dangerous to go to that place if you can't go back? I mean, isn't isn't that why people kind of stay on on a consciousness level because they don't want to depart totally, as you just uh, mentioned there? I don't see how that could be dangerous. Dangerous because you actually are in the plane where there are spirits that might you might drag with you back into your body, or where there are spirits that might jump into your body when you come back. So it's or while you are out of that body, but when you are you have taken all of your life force, your entirety, it's not just your astral form, your entirety, the entire fabric of your soul, and you have merged with the field that made you, and you now are fully within that field, then I do not see any danger there. I have never experienced any uh, danger there of any sort, nothing. So I don't see that as dangerous at all. Um Kundalini awakening could be um, if it's if it's created by the practices that just shake uh, the Kundalini into, into waking up and the person has not been adequately prepared, that could make a person a little crazy. Uh, but there are the technique that I practice is called cosmic cobra breath or tantric kriya kundalini pranayam that's called the highest gift uh, to humanity from babaji babaji being one of the uh, advanced teachers within the hindu tradition and that is something that addresses the upper centers right away uh, and that is something that prepares not only your energy your kundalini energy but your entire physicality your physiology your psyche your mind your state of being gets affected by that so that you will not freak out um when your kundalini energy moves it's it's like a spiritual technology so that's that's the technique that i use i learned the variation of that technique um at dr joe Dispenza's workshops um way back when and then um he teaches many different variations of that there are other um variations there's actually the variation of cosmic cobra breath exists within every advanced spiritual tradition sufi and and um the Kriya Yoga um, variation and uh, Egyptian variation, and you name it, there's a whole list. Um, so this has been a gift to humanity as a door opener. And so I recommend just finding a way to learn that, and then it will at least give you a choice um, when you are at the end of your life. And one more thing, you go in and out of the body so easily while you're still alive. So you lose the fear of death. And because when you when the death comes and you take the last breath, you don't need to do pre breath work. You don't need to do Kriya Yoga or Cosmic Cobra Breath. You just direct yourself in the same way that you've practiced doing all along for a few years for years beforehand and then there are no handlers you've bypassed the whole system so that is my suggestion as a way out but the kundalini awakening is usually activated through sex right the tantric um practices that have linked sexuality um to this uh, that is something that is considered to have been polluted or perverted by the Westerners and linked the sex to these practices. Originally, uh, back in the uh, Hindu's teachings, this the people who were able to gain access to their entire to their Kundalini within its entirety was celibate. So that's the 
um, I guess that's the higher approach to that. Whatever you experience through sexuality, your Kundalini awakening, that is not the same um, tool, let's just say, and that is, I don't think is going to take you where um, is the utilization of your entire prana, your entire life force, your entire Kundalini energy can take you. But uh, do you advocate celibacy in that way? It's a human emotion. It's a, it's a thing that everybody feels. It's something that everybody has, uh, the sexual attraction and the need for experiencing, you know, and the sexual desires. I mean, and, and you talk about, you also mentioned Babaji, he was uh, an Indian guru, and yeah. and we are talking about these gurus, but um, but they are certainly not. They were uh, many of them. I'm not saying necessarily Babaji, but a lot of these that just that name guru uh, refers to these days as false teachers, right? People that they put on a pedestal in a way, and and then they're worshipped by not only people in India but from all around the world. And once again, how everything got perverted uh, to the present day. Um, my understanding is that Babaji has been in spirit form around Earth for hundreds and hundreds of years and teaching or sharing the technique that allows uh, the human being to overcome their condition, to overcome the desires, to overcome the karma to overcome uh being entrapped and to become free and so i would say that maybe maybe there was a handful of the original teachers that were true souls that were in service here uh on earth and the rest was just just became you know the um dog and pony show kind of thing or nowadays so um as for the sexual attraction and uh, that being natural human thing, that usually is something that drives the person's choices throughout life. This is something that is stronger than most people. And people usually uh, have very little control over um, w their actions once that kicks in. And so that doesn't always serve as uh, um, to the benefit of the human being. But if you have learned to um, control your Kundalini energy, and you have, if you have learned um, to move that energy into the upper centers, which is during sexual act, it's usually lost because it moves down. It moves down of your body, or if you're utilizing the tantric technique, then you can circulate that, but it is still at some point is lost. So it does not go out of the top of your head. But if you have learned how to utilize that sexual energy, your prana, your life force, which in the Kundalini, that's all the same thing or the aspects of the same thing. Then you have control over your sexual desires and your sexual attractions because you are able to maintain that energy in the upper centers and then you do not experience sexual drive unless you want to consciously. So it stops running your life and you become able to bring it down if you want, if you are in love and if you want to engage in, in the sexual activity with someone, then you drop it down and you engage. But if you see that that is not to your benefit and that person is not someone you want to engage with, you're not helpless any longer because the sex drive is no longer running your show. So that's the difference and that's the benefit of utilizing or or learning the ability to control and direct your kundalini energy so how can it be activated and let's say a good way to prepare ourselves for the death experience when the soul leaves the body through the breath work, like I said, through Tantra Kriya Kundalini Pranayam, the uh, cosmic cobra breath is the technique that takes care of all of it. 
So, so, so where, where do people find that? I mean, how do people learn about that? Is this like uh, the Wim Hof t technique, the breathing technique, or something like similar to that? I don't believe that it is similar. Um, I'm not 100% familiar with Wim Hof's uh, technique, but it's it's a part of Kriya Yoga. And uh, there are uh, teachings online. There, there are schools that teach online. Uh, there are schools that other people could teach online. And if if you are not finding that yourself, then go ahead and check out um, Dr. Joe Dispenza's um, teachings and his breath work is based on that or, or you can utilize that and that will do the trick. And you're not, you don't really need anything else at all. You don't need a guru. You don't need anyone supervising you, holding your hand. You will start doing that breath work and it will change your life and it will give you access to your own resources. So let's suggest or let's hope that people can say or this, our soul consciousness can say no and not be sucked into this tunnel of light with the life review and all these deities or family members. And then what? We turn around and we look into the darkness or into the universe. Where do we go? Where can we go? Where is the best place to go if we don't? If we don't get hijacked by the archons, Isabella. Well, I think everyone could determine that for themselves. And this is why I recommend going out of body at will. Because first of all, you teach yourself to land straight in the fabric of reality, straight into the void. Right. So you bypass that. You, as soon as your body takes the last breath, you literally just direct yourself straight into that fabric and you can rest there for a little bit. But if you um, if that's not enough for you to just be just be in that state, then uh you can direct yourself to other worlds. For example, at the beginning of my practice, um I would come out like a rocket out of the top of my head and I would hang in the void for a little bit. And then I had a um, plan before I, I would leave my body. I had a plan like, oh, let's go check out um, the Syrian constellation. How is that there? Let's go check out um, the Andromeda galaxy. Let's go see if there's any specific place that I like. And so I've explored the cosmos but the higher realms of the cosmos quite a bit and the, the that's the places where either the life is in in light form or barely in any form at all and it feels incredible and you can go and explore through the outer body travel you can go and explore and find the place where you prefer to hop into afterwards um, so, so is it like remote viewing or do you actually go there at will, like say to the Syrian, con con Sirius constellation or Andromeda, whatever you talked about, Lyrian Lyra, um, yeah. and see that and what you don't get trapped there or sucked into a system or a matrix there or what are you just an experiencer? No, you don't get sucked into their system because you are above their system. You're above the fifth dimension. So the idea of the quantum travel is that is that is out of the astral structures of any planet or any world. And so you can, uh, you by definition cannot be sucked into any sort of system. That's a complete freedom space. So that, and then um, you can remote view. Remote viewing is tuning. Uh, I heard somewhere that remote viewing is like uh, tuning into God, right? If you tune into the consciousness that uh, in, encompasses everything, then you can literally direct your uh, gaze physically or non-physically. And it's the same thing. That's the basis of remote viewing. So you can just lay relax lay go really lay down relax and get really really deep into the state of relaxation where your mind stops talking the silence of the mind and then with the question in mind you can remote view whatever area so that's that you can do if you prefer or 
you could actually go there. Uh, you you will have no idea what's your body doing at that moment. The body um, will kick and scream at the beginning of your practice. Then it will let go of you, and and uh, because it knows that you're going in and out uh, every night, and so it's comfortable now with you. So until you return, you don't know what your body is doing, but you literally experience and the world of a different reality not with your senses these senses that are linked to the physical body but in a similar way um like when you experience reality when you through your third eye when you experience reality through the third eye you can have your eyes closed and you and and blocked masked off but you will still be able to see through i've had that experience before you can have a mask on completely cover your nose and um like that and then you will be able to still smell because you are utilizing your third eye so it's similar to that when you are out of body in a different world you are having an experience of what's of that reality without utilizing any sensory organs it's a phenomenal it's a phenomenal state of being i i wish more people had developed the access to it i only developed the access to it through persistence and perseverance and getting up every night at three in the morning or around three in the morning between one and four in the morning and doing the breath work and doing the meditation and that's how i know all these things so you did it on purpose you wanted to go to that place you were doing it continuously but it must yeah. take a lot of let's say stamina or great talent or um great uh, force within to actually uh, do all of that i mean do you think everybody can actually do that i think it takes a little curiosity <laughs> curiosity is very important here and a little willpower at the beginning because your body will do what you train it to do and that goes all across the board with our life what you eat what you don't eat um, when you go to sleep when you wake up all of that has to do with what you train your body to do you only need to train it for a short period of time and then the body will just repeat it because the body is very trainable so if you train your body uh, for a couple of months to wake up between one and four in the morning to do the meditation you first use an alarm clock but then you don't need an alarm clock your body wakes up naturally right now i just tell myself in my mind um all right like before i go to bed i i tell myself okay we're getting up at 2 30 to meditate boom wake up it'll be like 235 or something like that right so but not, but not everybody has the lot have the luxury of getting up at one between one and four in the morning because they have to go to work right because they're still part of the slave system i think mm. I, I mean most people are that i mean what can they do and what time should they even go to bed then well what time they go to bed is up to them the question is that the thing is that they need to sleep for a few hours before they get up so if they're getting up at three in the morning they need to go to bed by midnight for example right so because it needs to the meditation needs to happen during the deepest hours of sleep and you will be more rejuvenated through doing this practice than through sleeping in the night i know that 100 percent because um there was a time last a couple of years ago when i decided that okay i've done this for eight years now i need to uh sleep through the night i can sleep through the night so i slept through the night for two weeks and then the like every following day i was getting more and more exhausted with like the load that i carry on my shoulders <laughs> I was like, why, why am I crashing? And then I started doing the meditations again and I stopped crashing. So it, it puts you, it bathes you in what you're made of. So you come back rejuvenated. Everything is rejuvenated. Your, your physical, your cellular structure, your energy body, everything, everything is rejuvenated. So if you do the practice in, in the night, you will have more energy the next day than if you slept through that hour or two hours. But I mean, are you suggesting that people should do that every day? 
of for the yeah. rest of their lives? I'm not saying for the rest of their lives. When I learned, when I learned um, this technique to do the nighttime meditation, I was told do this for two weeks and then and then do this for forty days. And ten years later, I'm still doing it because I'm finding. <laughs> I'm finding that it the benefits overweigh any everything else, right, for me. And also it opened all of my abilities that I use now for the healing work and it changed my life. I'm a different person entirely. Not only that, but it also gives me access to incredible um realities and to to incredible um knowledge base as well. So it's worth it through and through 10 years, but I'm an overachiever, I guess, in the spiritual world. But I tell you, if you experience Samadhi one time, even once, it will uh, change your life forever. So why not experience it more than once? Why not experience it a few times a week? Why don't so that is actually it? also addictive. That's also like an addiction that you want to go to like uh, like an orgasmic state or something physical, uh, food and drink or whatever sensation you feel, a sensation of happiness or something. That's the same. But I mean, again, or I'm not, I'm not saying that you can debate me or whatever. Tell me if the, you think it's the same. But um, people, addiction uh, families uh, with, with children, how can they get up in the middle of the night? If they have to go to work. Yeah. And again, like I said, that it rejuvenates you. Addiction is by definition something that has power over you, meaning you do it against your will or you do it because it's stronger than you. The desire to do it is stronger than you. In this case, I am fully aware that I am the one choosing to continue doing it because I am very curious about how far I can go uh, in this lifetime while still sustaining my physical body. So that's what drives me and the curiosity also. But like I said, I decided to stop and and sleep and I slept um, and and. I did not have the addictive like oh I need to I need to get my fix. So there's a big difference between an addiction and a choice to continue with the practice. If we look at the monasteries or the swamis um, in the Hindu tradition, they do their practices and then those who attain the state of samadhi, they do the state of samadhi or they go into that state for the rest of their lives every day. I'm not there to do it every, to, for it to happen every day, but it happens regularly enough. So I don't think that they are um, within the category of being addicted to that condition. But again, it's a choice, you know, it's a choice. And I promise that even people, well, the newborn babies, if they are crying and mom needs to be there, that's not the time to do it. So just wait until the children are able to sleep through the night. But yeah. what if you have some kind of a sleeping condition? A lot of people are suffering from sleeplessness or have sleep sleeping disorders. Um, Even better. Apnea, so they, For example, sleep apnea that or would, something else. That would cure it, actually. Doing the meditation, doing the breath work, um, and, and bringing yourself into that state of being where your body is rejuvenated, and your energy is rejuvenated, that's going to help with the sleeping conditions for sure. Interesting. Very, very interesting. It's going to help with all kinds of physical conditions because it influences your physiology. It influences your men mental uh, well-being and it gives you access to the, the fabric of reality. So by all... Yeah, all the entire spectrum of benefits here. Very, very interesting. Could um, the, let's say, the creator force, God, the source force, could that actually be 
a very sophisticated version of artificial intelligence, like a machinery, not a physical machine, but a machine that is that is that is not linked to anything that we consider to be a soul or a, an enlightened being, not physical. I know a lot of people think God is physical, but let's talk about something not a non-physical entity, an all-powerful creative force. But could yeah, that like a be artificial intelligence and people don't know about it? And we are part like a projector. of matrix game. Yeah, like a projection, right? Like a like a projector. I just listened um, to Linda Modenhauer's presentation at the conference where she talked about uh, the holographic universe and the projection and the potential that our whole reality, including ourselves, are the projections of that. And yeah, it could be, and we would never know. <laughs> we don't know. This the is like a holographic illusion. I've talked about to many, many uh, speakers about that. David yeah. Icke has also wrote, uh, written yeah. about that for years and years. And lots of people you probably know as well talk about that, that this is a sophisticated holographic manifestation. And right. could that also be why the law of attraction is the law of the universe in a way because if you project something you think about something you feel it it will manifest in your life also if there's something you don't want if you have that feeling of not wanting it but you feel it strongly then often that can manifest as well so it's when you really manifest in a good way it can happen i'm not talking about it from a new age point of view obviously which is where it comes from in a way but i mean the law of attraction is like that universal law isn't it yeah, what you put out, you get back. That's the law of the universe and, and not what you, of our universe anyway, not what you put out as to like what you're saying and what you're smiling about, what you're faking about, what what's vibrating in the background. If behind that smile is misery, you'll get more misery. So that ties into the holographic projection of your own state of being, that which you, reflection of which you get back uh, through external, seemingly external circumstances. Yeah, I heard a few theories that this is a simulation as well, but my theory is that you can get out of that simulation when you go back into the space of nothingness because nothing is projected there. Nothing is projected there. Mm -hmm. And you need to experience it to know what I'm talking about. And then, and then once you've experienced it or any person who has experienced it, uh, then we can sit down and, and uh, have a conversation or debate like, wow, well, so was that, what was that like? Um, but until a person experienced it, it's just w the words coming out of my mouth or uh, on paper somewhere with very little meaning because it's very hard for the human mind to grasp what it means, the state of everything and nothing at the same time. But do you think that what you're talking about, what you're suggesting that people do with this um, quantum travel and yeah. astral projection and going to the void, the nothingness and all of that, learning to get out of your body in the night, do you think that is the key, the only key to to uh, escape and exit the reincarnation karma wheel factory death trap system or is are, are there other ways as well i don't know if there are other ways this is the way that i have figured out and that i am suggesting and proposing for people to uh, practice so that they can find out for themselves i know that in the um, Hindu traditions also, um, those who have attained the state of samadhi or those who have paved the way, let's say, right back to the fabric of reality, the state of omnipresence, um, there is a belief that that burns off your karma, meaning you no longer are um, wired into the whole karmic will, so to speak. But it definitely, like I said earlier, definitely gives you control over your uh, sex sex drive and sexual energy and it also um, eases is the entanglement with attachments and desires so is 
every all of that is an indication that that's the, definitely the way out. Are there other ways out? Probably, but I'm just not aware of them. But do you think that we even should get out of that system? So, I mean, do you think there's a problem with reincarnating and feeling all of those sensations again in a new body with that white memory that we can't remember, which is a clever thing, isn't it? Yeah, definitely a clever thing. But I think everyone should decide for themselves because there are those who are very ready to get out and really uh, lean in or, or seek in the sovereignty where they're no longer within the structure that manipulates or uses them. And there are those who are very attached to sensations, they're very attached to um, the joys that Earth Plane brings and also the suffering and just don't are not ready and not there. So I think that the practices give you a choice uh, to decide for yourself so that you don't you don't only have one direction to go but you have both might you decide but most people know there are people who already know that they want to get out and there are people who know that they don't and so i think it's it's an individual decision but if you know if i know for example that i have no desire of returning here in this form and going to a better place let's say um but you know maybe i don't do what you are suggesting uh or, I mean, I'm talking just, um, you know, from a point of view of a lot of viewers watching this and thinking, how can they go about doing that? And certainly they should certainly study the whole topic of soul harvesting, right? And loosh yeah. and what these archons are doing, right? And you can probably yeah. talk a lot about that and, and do in your, in your book. But I mean, this is your way of saying you can get out of it like that. And you can yeah. practice this, practice this every night on Earth. Um, and but if you already know you don't want to go back, do you really have to do that? This is basically what you say. You have to prepare. That is your most important uh, message for people. Or yeah. what is your most important message? Yeah, the most important message is that you need to prepare in some way for sure. And my program uh, of preparation, uh, my recommendations are to do the inner work, to release the contracts binding us to earth and to the loved ones, and then to teach yourself to travel out of body, not astral project, but direct yourself into the higher realm. So go out of body at will, so that at least you have a choice. So this is, this is, mm, these are my recommendations. For and do you those. teach people how to do this? Because obviously just say, oh, you have to just go out of body at will and learn how to do that. Then a lot of people would sit there and say, oh my God, how do I, how do I do that? And is that dangerous? And should I even go out of my body? I mean, uh, do you teach this or are you suggesting that people find different teachers and can we, how can we know that those are the good teachers? Well, that's that's a uh, handful there. I don't know how you know if these are the good teachers. I think people would see what the, who they gravitate towards. Um, I do teach some of it in my workshops, but I just had a bunch of workshops and they uh, like now I don't have anything coming up. Um, what I do have coming up is sold out. I'll have a few of the workshops that I recorded that will be available on my website eventually uh, over the next month or so, and so that they can purchase that and listen to these, and they will have some techniques in there. But there are other teachers also, so I always say do your research, find out what resonates with you, and just do something because if you are not uh, taking any steps, then you're just being uh, shepherded uh, like sheep right back to uh, through the system, put through the system right back into the next incarnation. Um, exactly. And so isn't it interesting that. that all of these different religions, all of these many branches of Christianity and Islam and Hinduism and all and, and Judaism, they all want uh, the, their people that devote themselves to their religion to go to that plane, 
the heavenly plane or that nirvana or that plane. But isn't that the um, tunnel of light and the light frequency? So what they're all teaching people is to go directly into this archon karma wheel exactly. system. So actually, yeah. it's all about it's working with smoke and mirrors, really, the Hegelian yeah. dialectic, splitting, divide and conquer. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or Jew or a Hindu or Muslim, as long as you go to that light. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's a part of the structure. That's a part of the teachings. And the teachings are here to support the system. And so the cycle continues. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in your book, Leaving the Trap, you explain your methods and your techniques, I take it? I don't give the Tantra Kriya Kundalini Pranayama, just mention it there, but I explain the meditative technique in the middle of the night, and I explain where people can go and how people can prepare for um, negotiations with the handlers. And I give a few examples of how I learned this, um, the book is very short and to the point, and I'm being told that at the present moment, that's the only book on the market that actually gives some recommendations and direction, that other books just talk about this more about the system rather than how to get out. Uh, my uh, book gives recommendations. So uh, that is available on Amazon and uh, my and there are there'll be workshops that I teach. Um, recordings will be available within the next month or so on my website, isabellagreen.com. Right, and people can get a copy on Amazon and through your website, right? Just on Amazon, yeah. The just, on just on Amazon, mm -hmm. and the rest on your website. People can find out more about you and your work and see different things and podcasts and and whatever yes. you have on there. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So in our Thank remaining you. moments before we close here, is there a final message or something you want to say to the audience before we, we close off today? I would like to say that be this reality simulation or holographic projection, there are always loopholes that could be found, either found or created. And if you are curious and if you question things and if you do your research then you can find the way to either create or find these loopholes and pave your way back into the sovereignty of yourself as a soul as a being and from that point and on your experience not only on earth but also after passing will be a completely different story so I wish everyone to find this level of soul sovereignty and freedom. That's wonderful. That's such a great message. And it's been absolutely wonderful and really great and beautiful to have you on the show today. And I'd love to see you back at some point here on Age of Truth TV. And I want to thank you, Isabella A. Green, for being on with us today. Thank you, Luke. It was a pleasure. Thank you for your wonderful, enlightening questions. I enjoyed this very much. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you so much for inviting me and for your time. And I will see you on Facebook now, and then I'll see you next time. Absolutely. Thank you, Isabella. I feel the same. Have a wonderful day. You too. Have a great night. Thank you so much to Isabella A. Green, and thanks to all of you for watching Age of Truth TV. You can support us by clicking onto our website, ageoftruth.tv. And please like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell for notifications. You can sign up for our newsletter on our website, ageoftruth.tv, as well. You can also subscribe to our alternative channels on BitChute and Brighton. Your support is greatly appreciated and very needed. On behalf of the Age of Truth TV team, we thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.